Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. I did a message on family holiday events, the side effects, basically preparing people for what is ahead, depending on what type of families they have. If they have a toxic family, then, well, you need to be prepared. Now, we're talking about pride in this one, family holiday events and pride. And the purpose of this message is because it is in these settings where you've got families against families, whether they are bold about it or they are hidden about it, you know, but it's there. You can feel it. Uh, there's this I'm better than you mentality and my family is better than your family and we got more and so you can even hear this sort of thing in their conversation now these might be blood family members or they may not be but somehow you're connected to them whether it's your church family your adoptive family your in-laws uh, you know, a friend's family, but you're interconnected with these prideful folks. Okay. Not all of them are this way, but you do pick up on this competitive spirit. Um, there's some bitterness, there's some resentfulness, there's some jealousy, and you got some patriarchs and, uh, matriarchs that support this sort of thing. OK, that's where a lot of the generations get that stuff from is from those that have come before us. So when you're in a setting where pride is heavy, the negativity is just swarming and people are trying, God bless them, to be on their best behavior. But yet that energy is there. You definitely have to be that one off there in the corner, keeping quiet and praying <laughs> in Jesus name. So I'm going to pull some scriptures out in this particular message uh, because I don't want people to lose sight of the Bible, of course, because that's where I, a lot of the messages I am inspired, um, you know, from God's wisdom, his grace, his mercy, his word, uh, the Christian experiences and the research and the interviews that I've had in addition to my upbringing and the people I encounter. It's just been Ooh, a lot. OK, but going back to the word of God, that's where it all starts. OK, um, when you are walking with him, Matthew 20, 26, 7 says, yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Jesus was instructing his disciples and some folks in the family need to remind some people that even though you might have a lot, even though you have so much going on for you, this isn't the time to be puffed up with pride because the Lord can give and he can take away. But now is the time for you to serve. So here's my glass <laughs> and go get me something to drink. <laughs> now, some folks, of course, they may be, uh, you know, a bit offended by that sort of thing. But you get my point. OK, it might be buffet style, um, you know, serving going on. And, you know, it just might be a matter of just telling someone, listen, um, is it possible asking them? I should say, um, is it possible if you can come over and help serve the family, the one who is the most prideful, most successful, you know, uh, happy one, uh, <laughs> you know, put them to work. OK, it's a nice, humbling experience for them and do it with a smile on your face and talk softly, you know, but put them to work. First Peter five and five, six says, likewise, you younger people submit yourselves to your elders. What better place than at a family holiday event? Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Right. He gives a, gives us a merit to favor things that we didn't. I mean, we didn't have to do anything. God just said, listen, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you grace. I could very well allow a curse to fall upon you. I could, you know, make life very difficult for you. But you know what? You're humble. 
I'm giving you grace. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hands of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And sooner or later, somebody will be exalted. Somebody will be acknowledged, honored, right? But humble yourself, though. Walking around here talking about, I'm a proud grandmother of, I am so proud of my daughter. Oh, my son, right? You're walking around here. Guess what? What happens? Usually they end up doing something later on that make you wish that you never said on Facebook or anywhere else how proud you were. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Pride comes before fall. Proverbs 29, 23 says a man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. This is why this isn't the place. I'm telling you, family holiday events is not the place to act competitive, to start pulling out all of the wonderful goodies that your husband bought you or all of the stuff that, you know, your mommy and daddy got you. Mm -mm, not a good idea because next year income levels just might not be the same. Okay. And I personally gone through that myself. Oh, this year I was able to do so much, but the next year, nope. That's why, I, that's another reason why I'm not in, uh, you know, support of all of this pagan holiday worship. Because Satan, he sets you up and makes you think that it, every year is going to be the same. You're going to always have the money to do. You're going to always be able to travel. You're going to always have an end in somebody's life. And then you get yourself all you know, excited about things only to find out that God got something else in store. You see, he got something else in store. First up, I didn't tell you to be worshiping those idols. I didn't tell you to be putting your car before your family. I didn't tell you to be esteeming yourself by going around here telling everybody about your job and about your title. Everybody don't need to know where you work. Everybody don't need to know uh, what you do at your job. Not everybody needs to know what your socioeconomic status is by the car you drive, by the watch that you have, by the purse that you have on, by the heels that you wear. If anything, a family holiday setting, that's the best place to be pulling out your cheap stuff. Because see, some of the hustlers, pimps and players that's on the game, they see you and they say, mm hmm, and this is the one that I'm going to hit up for, with some, uh, with, with my request. I, this is the one that I'm going to take from. Oh, she's not going to help me. That's all right. Cause I'm going to go and check her bag out and check her pockets out and see what I can get. Or maybe I'll just take some toys from her child and give them to my child that don't have any. Oh, yeah. And that sort of thing happened when we were very young. A relative who knew that we had quite a few toys, right? But his child uh, didn't have. He made sure that he helped himself, a grown adult now, helped himself to some of our toys, and gave to his. And actually the child wasn't even his biological child. It was uh, a girlfriend's child. But he just couldn't stand the fact that we had all of what we had that particular Christmas. Okay? Mm-hmm. It's not a good time, a good season to be doing all of that prideful stuff. Proverbs 22, 4 advises by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life or I should say it reminds us by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life that's why some people they don't like all of that oh you are the greatest oh wow thank you so much oh this person I tell you oh, he should be given a thousand awards for all that he has done, right? They don't like all that. Why? Because they know. They know how that goes. What goes up comes down. They're not about to get caught up in that foolishness. By humility and the fear of the Lord. See, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. That worries some folks. That makes them scared. I know huh, my attitude over the years changed. When I saw some stuff that God did in some people's lives, I said, oh. Oh, no, uh -uh, I'm scared of God. Nope, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. Uh, -uh I'm not going over here. Nope, I'm not picking up the phone here. Mm -mm. Nope, I didn't see God do some things. No, when God says that he will let me know when to do something, I'll do it. 
God didn't release me to celebrate none of these pagan holidays. So no, don't put my name on that list. But you're a Christian. And well, the church does it. I don't care what the church does. I know God did not release me to get involved in that sort of thing. You see, you have to stand up for yourself at times because people will try to pull you into some mess. Next thing you know, you crying and everything, all broken hearted, talking about, Lord, I'm so sorry. The Lord said, mm. <laughs> mm, like that mom, right? You go and you tell her something and she goes, hmm. All right. Psalm 138.6. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. And this is why sometimes, too, when you think about it, if I'm focused on the Lord, I don't have time to be getting mixed up with family members competing. Right. This one arguing with this one about what this one has. And, hey, what about this? And, you know, you should have bought mama that. See, my gift is better. Look, mama, how much I paid and left the tag on. Oh, my goodness. And I saw this stuff. I'm telling you, I saw it. Mm, mm, mm. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly. That humble one over there in the corner, that one who's got the messed up looking shoes, whose mama's working two, three jobs, and she's not even coming over there bragging about one thing, got her purse from a discount store. That one should be blessed. That one should be blessed. Not the folks that already got. Not the folks that's always talking about where they've been, what they've been doing. They don't need nothing else. It's that one over there where our money should be going. Who's trying to make it. It's that struggling business owner. It's that one that's out there helping folks. It's that one that's giving food away, giving clothes away, giving what they create away. Those of us who are struggling artists, we know. We know we've been at this thing for a long time. And every now and again, somebody that is uh, just caught up in the spirit of the Lord will bless us every now and again. But mainly a lot of the monies and the opportunities and all that good stuff goes to people who already got. They're already in the game. They're already in the business. They already have a name for themselves. And then they get more and they get more and they get more to the point where what do they do? Burnout, crash. Get caught up on in drugs, okay, alcohol. They overlook those of us out here that's working, that's putting in a good fight. And you know what I say to all that? I say that's okay, though, but God. <laughs> but God. They show up at the family events, some of them, right? Got a lot of opportunity going for them. Could hook you up, but they don't. They don't. Instead, they hook that one up that's just like them, just as prideful and greedy, lies, manipulates. You don't want to be in this game. You don't want to be in this business because you one of them righteous types. Right? Well, that's all the more reason why we need more righteous folks in the game to change the game. Oh, but they don't want the game change. See? And they show up at these family events and they love talking about who they know, where they're going, um, you know, this money and that money and this opportunity and that one. And meanwhile, you looking at your child or you looking at somebody else's child or you even looking at yourself and you're saying, mm, 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 mm. God is moving you to bless me right now, but you don't even see it. And you will get blessed even more because you're blessing somebody that's doing what's right. You see? Mm -hmm. But they're in the competitive, you know, game. They're in the. I'm better than you game. I want what you got. I'll lie. I'll cover up. I'll come up with anything just to look better than my sister, better than my brother, better than my cousin, better than my uh, um, brother. I don't like him no way. Mm -hmm. And they're at these family events. All right, let's keep it moving. Luke 18, 11 through 14. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. Now, let me stop right there and let me talk about someone who made up now, mind you. But let's talk about someone who goes to the family event and they say something about somebody else's family, right? They say to the mother or to the father or aunt or uncle or somebody. Well, God, whew, God, I thank him. You know why? 
because I'm not like cousin so and so and her family. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of liars over there, hustlers. You know, they don't treat folk right at all. And you know, they got some cheaters over there too. And they don't mind taking advantage of the poor, broke, busted, and disgusted. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I'm not like them, right? And what do they do, those that are listening? Yes, mm -hmm, they sure are a mess over there, them fools. Yeah, I'm glad you and your family aren't over there with them crazy cousins. Uh, 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 those no good bleep. All right, okay. Now, that's what pride looks like. But see, listen to this scripture. This man continues on, right? He's a bragger. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess, right? Some family member, mama, I give you money every time it's your birthday, don't I? I hook you up. I don't understand why all the brothers and my sisters and stuff don't want to help you. Lord Jesus, I'm here for you. I'm there. I call you up, but my brother, my sister, I don't know what they do. Uh oh, you hear that? You hear that? Mm hmm. And some folks wonder why their relationships over time with their parents ended up widening. Why that gap started showing up because it started with pride. Some of you all. Oh, Jesus. Why was it this way and that way with mama, with daddy? Because of pride. Right. It's not that you were a bad person. It's not that you aren't doing well in life and all that. But your relationship will never get where it's supposed to be because y'all prideful folk. Right. Listen to this tax collect tax collector. He's fasting twice a week. He's giving his tithes of all that he possesses and the tax collect and the tax collector. Right. That one that this Pharisee talking about and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven. Right. Oh, oh, right. Some people, they, they they're not getting it. They're not getting it. But listen, and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Bam, right there in your face. Cousin so-and-so might have a lot of issues. Sister so-and-so might not be doing all that you do. But one thing about it, that one went to God and said, be merciful to me, a sinner. They know what they are. They know what they're doing. God shows them in the spiritual realm. Matter of fact, God, a lot of times is the reason why some of these folks don't do what favorite Freddie does and what Dapper Donnie does and what Jenny does. Huh? Why? Because sometimes God say, I don't want you to give that family another thing. They don't even honor me. Jesus, so that tax collector, all he said was, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house. This is Jesus talking. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. So this year, they may be talking a lot of mess about all this wonderful stuff that's going on and I'm this and that and all that. Or they might be puffing themselves up even in their sin. Well, at least I ain't as bad as so-and-so and you know so-and-so's family, this, that, and the other. And at least I'm here and at least, and even the parents might even be puffing these kids up. But that doesn't mean that next year is going to be the same. Jesus, he she on double wall, she gets. Matter of fact, I see it in the spirit. Some folks in my own family, it won't be the same. Enjoy it now because you'll be crying next year. Enjoy it now because you will be falling over from all of the hurt that is to come. I'm giving a prophetic message as I see it in the spirit for some of you all. You've got to be humble, Lord Jesus. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Luke 18, 11, 14. I am serious as serious can be when I give this message. The Lord just come over my spirit and told me to let them know that it won't be the same. Enjoy it now while it lasts because it won't be the same. I've seen this time and time again in my own life. You're up today and then something comes and then your life is turned upside down again and again and again. And you experience those disappointments and you experience the losses. And then you go to the Lord and you say, Lord Jesus, I can't take another one. But I know that you're here and I know that you're going to see me through once again. That's why it does not pay to sit up there and be prideful. 
It doesn't pay to talk about how great and wonderful your family is and then compare it to some folks that don't have. It doesn't make any sense in the eyes of God. It may make sense to you and those that like to talk about other folk, but it doesn't make any sense to God. If anything, it is foolish because the Lord gives and he takes away. And some folks, I hate to say it, but you love your children more than God and God going to take one of your kids, whether it's through death or whether it is sending your child away from you. And that's why some parents can't wrap their heads around. Wait a minute. I thought I had my baby on lock. I thought I had my baby close to me. No, your baby gone. Your baby gone because you esteem that child more than you esteem God. Lord Jesus. And so I got two more scriptures and then I've got to close this message out in Jesus name. Second Corinthians 10, 17, 18 said, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord for not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. Right. Right. We got to be mindful of what's taking place in these family atmospheres. Uh Oh, I got more scriptures. Hang on. Proverbs 16, 18, 20. Pride goes before destruction. This is the most important one yet. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Right. I just told you by using the example of the, the, the one who esteems his or her child. You better ask God for mercy upon your child. I love my child. My children are this to me. My children are that. You love them more than God. You love them more than a partner that might have to be the one that wash your behind one day. That might be the one that might have to, Lord Jesus, might have to drive you somewhere. You not promise your legs. But yet I love my kids and my kids this, that, and the other. But you don't know who's going to be around you that you might have to rely on me while those kids that you esteem so much is gone in Jesus name. And sometimes God, like I said, will set it up so that it is that way because you were prideful all those years. You didn't humble yourself when you saw that other people were hurting and other people had issues with their children. You talked a great deal about how wonderful your children were. You talked a great deal about all of their accolades and how great they are. And now you're not even close to your children, parent. Jesus. So the issue wasn't about the child. The issue was about the pride. Come on. It wasn't about the child. It was about you and God and how prideful you are and how you don't know how to just separate yourself from pride and go humbly before him. It was pride about not going to his church. It was pride about not talking to the people of God. It was pride about not listening to the messengers and doing what was right. It was pride about money. It was pride about opportunity. It was pride about your house. It was a pride about the way you look and the way you dress and the things that you got. It was pride. It was pride. It was pride. And now God said it's reaping season. It's reaping season. Pride. Goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Happy is he. I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm not trusting in man and his possessions. They said, oh, well, your man is this and your man is that. And at least you got a man. But I'm not interested in all of what that man provides and what that man can give. And that, 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 this man. What I am concerned about is what my God wants from me. What I'm concerned about is what God is going to do with you, listener. What is he going to do with you? Can you be able to just humbly put a comment in and say, yes, you're talking to me. Can you just humbly say, okay, I, I got the message. Can you just humbly pick up a phone and say, I'm sorry to those that you were bragging on and bragging about. Can you just go and talk to that one who doesn't have much and give him or her a little bit of a blessing? Come on, Jesus. James 4, 7, 10, submit to God, resist the devil. That's the devil that moves on these people to act like this. And God says, okay, if that's what you want, I'm going to let you have it. 
You go into these family functions and you know that some of these folks, they're not even the least bit interested in God, in Christianity, in wisdom, in spirituality. The music that they play isn't worshiping God, isn't acknowledging God. The stuff they buy for their kids, please. And so what do we do when we see this sort of thing? We pray. I'm not going to puff myself up and talk about what I bought my kids and what we listen to and how that's why I don't do Christmas because of this and that. Uh, da, 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 da. There's no reason for that because we know what God's going to do. Even when sometimes all we do is sit back and be quiet. But then there's times where we've got to be bold and speak like I'm speaking now. In Jesus name, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yes, they will come at you because of something that you said that struck pride, that hurt pride, that made pride go and they start roaring at you. Huh. Jesus, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. You humble yourself. You acknowledge that God reign supreme that God is the alpha and omega that God is the first and the last that God is responsible for the breath that is in your body God I don't care about what everybody else believes or doesn't believe I know what I believe God is the creator of the universe Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 3.12, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering. That's what a Christian is supposed to look like. I know some of you all haven't seen any good Christians lately, but that's what a Christian is supposed to look like. As the elect of God, holy and beloved, and that's what you're supposed to look like too. Let's not just talk about everybody else. That's what we all supposed to look like. As the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender Tender mercies, right? Kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering. Look it up if you need further explanation. And lastly, Ephesians 4 1, walk worthy of the calling, right? At these family holiday events, walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness. Woo, Jesus. So you got the message. Those of you all who respect the word of the Lord, who appreciate the word of the Lord, you got the message. You can walk in peace. You can know that wherever your feet tread, wherever it is that God has called you, that you're going to be all right. That you're not going to be a part of the debates. Right. Somebody got to prove a point. That's pride. Somebody got to tell a lie. That's pride. Somebody got to cover up something. That's pride. Somebody got to sit over there and talk about my kids, this, my kids, that. And I don't want your kids doing this, that, and the other. That's pride. Somebody coming over talking about how good somebody else's cooking is while disrespecting the host. That's pride. That's pride. Somebody talking about how much money they spent on something and how you better appreciate this, that, and the other. That's pride. There we go pride again, showing up, showing out. Now we got to send pride out the door. And now you're not welcome no more because I told you once, I told you twice, I told you three times. I guess you didn't get the message. You didn't get the memo. Pride, you can't show up here. Okay? You're going to cause destruction. You're going to cause somebody not to like you. You're going to cause some people to fight up in here. Pride, oh, it starts getting a little bit of courage, right? That liquor courage. <laughs> then somebody ends up getting put on their back. That's pride. So you got more than enough. Well, I thank you in Jesus mighty name as always for using me. A mere vessel. That's all I am. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I pray in Jesus mighty name that those who are listening will not be those that are guilty of pride, but that they will just walk being humble, lowly, gentle, meek, mild sweet in Jesus name being peaceful in Jesus name I pray Lord Jesus that they will not be caught up in offenses and that they will not have to carry any type of burdens Lord Jesus but that Lord you will just take their burdens from them I pray that they will have a good time wherever they may go in Jesus name thank you listener Thank you, as always, for showing your support. Please do check the description box for anything 
related to your situation. Also, if you haven't given, please do give. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Subscribe today.